Today, I want to take a few minutes to show you my newest purchase. This is the Smith & Wesson Model 69 with the 2 and 3 quarter inch barrel. This is a 44 Magnum, and Smith & Wesson calls it the uh, Combat Magnum. Now, this is their second Model 69. They have one with a 4 and a quarter inch barrel, which I think they also called the Combat Magnum. Now I believe the four and the quarter came out in 2014 and this two and three quarter inch barrel came out in late spring of this year, 2017. I believe it was announced last fall, but it actually started shipping um, late spring of 2017, which is about five months ago now. Now right before this started shipping, I recorded a video where I showed my new 629. And in that video, I said a couple things that I want to repeat here. Uh, one of the things I said was, I'm a firm believer that a man cannot own too many 44s. I also stated in that video, not only should everyone own a 44, but everyone that owns a 44 needs a snubby 44. And I stated that as I was shopping for this one, I was also considering the Model 69, but at that time they only had the four, uh, four and a quarter inch barrel, but I had heard that the two and three quarter was coming, and I mentioned that uh, one or both may end up eventually in my pocket. Well, that day has come for the shorter barrel. Here it is. Now, for our friends up in Canada, this six and a half inch would be kind of the regular length, and I think the four and the quarter would be their snubby, seeing they, they can't go uh, with a shorter barrel than that. But here in the United States, we can get these uh, shorter barrels, and so here it is. Now, I do want to point out that if you're subscribed to the channel, you've recently seen a couple new firearms show up. I just want to point out that I am not a sponsored channel. I'm not a gun review channel. Um, I've shown a few new firearms that I've acquired this year, but uh, don't expect to see that on a regular basis. There will be a couple new ones occasionally, but uh, this and the other new firearms you've seen show up are the result of being frugal, um, having firearms on a wish list for many, many months or years, and saving quite a bit of money over the course of time. Speaking of money, the MSRP on this particular revolver, I believe, is about $850, but uh, currently you can find it on the street for about $200 less than that. Now, there are a few things about this that some people love and a few things that some people hate. Um, it is kind of a two-tone. It's a matte stainless steel, and then you can see some uh, black hardware here. The, the screws are black, the hammer is black, uh, the trigger is black, the cylinder re uh, release is black, and as is appropriate, this big eyesore here is a, a big black mark on the side of the revolver. Also, the extractor rod is black. Now there's a few things that are kind of unique about this compared to most of Smith & Wesson's uh, 44s. The 69 that came out a couple years ago with the longer barrel and this one are their first two offerings of a 44 Magnum in an L frame. Now one of the things that some people have noted on this particular revolver is their move to a sleeved barrel. So this barrel is actually two parts. Um, you can see the the line right here. This this inner part is a separate piece of metal from the out slot, um, the outside. There's a lot of folks that aren't a big fan of that, but I think mostly that's because it's change. Um, I haven't heard of any complaints yet as far as function as a result of that. Here's the old style, and as you can see on this 629. Uh, the rifling to the outside, that's all one piece of metal, uh, where these are, are two separate. Obviously this came out since the early 80s and so it does not have a pin barrel and it does not have recessed uh, cylinders. And this has come out since the Clintons were in office so it does have the giant black pimple right on the side of it. Now one thing I'm curious about is this silly lock here. My other Smith & Wessons have that and I've never had an issue with it, but the one time I've heard of what I believe to be credible uh, reports of that lock failing and locking the uh, revolver up during function was with the Smith & Wesson Model 329, which is also a 44 Magnum, but a really light frame. I've not yet heard of any problems with the Model 69 having that issue, um, but if I ever do have that issue, you can be sure that I'll be uh, quick to let you all know. Another change is the cylinder lockup. On this 629, you can see the cylinder locks up here, uh, where it mates back here, and at the front, it locks up here. 
with this model 69 they added this uh, this little ball detent which locks up right inside here inside the crane well, and I think they call it a, a three lock up it actually you got the little piece right under here that locks up as well so one two three places that locks up but that ball detent is supposed to make it a lot firmer lock up well, let's get some measurements on this all right for the cylinder this is a five shot which is all they can fit in the cell frame the diameter I'm getting 0 0.1562 for the end frame I'm getting 1.712 for my charter arms bulldog which is also a five shot it's a 44 special I'm getting 1.451 and then for this Taurus 7 shot 357 Magnum I'm getting 1.531 for length on the model 69 cylinder I'm getting 1.670 inches on the 629 I'm getting 1.70 which is the same thing I got on the model 29 so the cylinder is a hair shorter than that 629 on my Chart Arms Bulldog I'm getting 1.580 and on this Taurus 357 Magnum cylinder I'm getting 1.574 it does come with one factory uh, five round magazine here and for the space between the chambers I'm getting 0.16 inches with the 629 on the end frame I'm getting 0.122 inches so there's more metal between the uh, chambers on the 69 than there is on the 629 on the Charter Arms Bulldog I'm getting 0 0.088 which is about the same as I'm getting on my 357 Magnum one of the advantages of having an odd number of cylinders if you look at this uh, 629 that has six cylinders the notch that this locks into is in line with the cylinder and some consider that a weak spot on the cylinder I've never had an issue with that but if you shoot some really hot ammo uh, you could potentially damage that where when you have an odd number of cylinders like this five that notch falls between the cylinders and so that actually strengthen, uh, strengthens the cylinder even more compared to the six shot variety I don't have any pin gauges to measure the chamber throats with but uh, I believe my 29 and my 629 they're both 0.429 inches this bullet is uh, sized to 0 0.430 and it is a uh, very tight fit I'd have to push pretty hard to shove that bullet down in there my chart arms bulldog those mouths are 0.433 and those same bullets fall right through on this model 69 this bullet that size 0 0.430 is a tight fit but not quite as tight as the 629 so I believe that uh, this chamber throat is probably right at 0 0.430 which for the bullets I'm using is going to be just fine as long as we're talking about the chambers here's a speed load loader from HKS made for the Charter Arms Bulldog and it lines up fairly well with the Bulldog the model 69 cylinder is slightly larger and so it'll work but it's not quite cut for it there's only one company I know of for sure that makes a speed loader specifically for the 69 uh, what was the name of that company uh, speed bees I think and they're I think their speed loaders are about thirty six dollars each I don't have any alright let's get some weights again the Chart Arms Bulldog little over 19 and a half ounces my Taurus 66 7 shot 357 Magnum with a 4 inch barrel 38 and a half ounces my 629 with a 3 inch barrel hair over 39 ounces my model 29 with a 6 and a half inch barrel 47 and a half ounces and finally the model 69 
with the two and three quarter inch barrel. 34.6 ounces. Smith & Wesson advertises this as 34.4. Uh, I'm not arguing with them. My scale is pretty cheap. It may be off. I believe their four and a quarter inch model they advertise at 37.4. So the longer barrel of the older model 69 apparently adds three ounces to it. That's 981 grams. 2.163 pounds or 2 pounds 2.6 ounces. Now this does come the same sights as my model 629 has minus the fact that the 629 has a little white line around the back sight and the 69 does not. Now my 69 has the full length extractor rod where my 629 3 inch has a shorter one. And you can see the under lug comes a little closer to the end of the barrel and there's a lot more cut out than on the 629. Now I've already taken this to the range but let me cut in a real quick video segment I took right before I took it to the range about the uh, extractor rod. If you notice that as I spin this thing there's a slight bend to that. Not very much, but a slight one. Right here at the tip. And then if you look, you can actually see damage on the knurling on that. It's almost like somebody grabbed that with a pair of pliers or some other tool uh, to twist that off. And then you can see some some damage down here as well. Right here, right there. This is a brand new gun. I'm filming this portion of the video actually first uh, because I have not shot this yet and I'm really itching to get this out to the range. So I'm going to film this portion before I ever shoot it to show the, the damage on this ejector rod and then uh, I'm running out to the range and I'll film the rest later. So when I called Smith & Wesson about this, uh, the, the guy I talked to was real helpful and he was more than happy to send me a new one. but. This revolver's only been on the market for a few months and they, he didn't have any parts he could order against. He told me right now my options are I could send this back and wait a few weeks to get it back from them or I could wait a month or two and after that time their parts catalog should be updated. Uh, that He says this often happens when a new firearm hits the market and I should be able to call them up and they'll be able to uh, order one from their system and have it sent to me. The damage on this thing is annoying, but it, it doesn't affect function, so I'm just going to wait a couple of months and try calling them back again. On a couple of reviews I've seen uh, from some other folks, they complained about these grips, and I'm not sure I'm sold on them yet either, but I'm not sure I'm against them. Uh, it is a rubber grip, but it's not a, uh, a squishy rubber. This is kind of a hard plastic in here with kind of a, a slightly softer rubber molded around the outside of it. This is a, a really hard plastic and so they're pretty good for grip but uh, there's no real give to them at all. This is a round butt and I picked up some Hogue um, round butt conversion grips to try out and I'm not sure yet whether or not I'm going to use them. There's a stirrup that you put on there if you're going to install it but just to just to put it on here real quick. Now these are these grips are less than twenty dollars so I don't mind picking them up. Um, the gun I think feels slightly better with them but I'm not convinced on whether or not I'm going to use them on there yet. I've I haven't shot the gun with the hog grips on it yet. I've only used the factory grips. And there's another grip that I'm considering. It's the Packmeyer Diamond Pro. I've heard really good things about them. I haven't tried them yet. Um, this hog mono grip is a touch larger than the factory. And I put the factory, I laid it on top of the hog grip, and that's about how it would be when in, uh, installed on the gun. You can see a little bit of the difference there. The factory grip does cover the back strap where the Hogue does not. Again, I'm not, 
I'll end up shooting it at the range with these whole grips on. I'm not sure yet which grip I'm going to end up sticking with. And like I said, I may end up getting the Packmeyers as well. Now the trigger pull. A single and double action both is kind of what you'd expect from a Smith. I really like it. It's really nice. I don't have a trigger gauge other than my finger, and my finger says good. Now if you look at my 629, it has a smooth face on its trigger. You look at my Model 29, it has grooves on the face of that trigger. My 357 uh, from Taurus is a smooth face trigger. If you look on this Charter Arms Bulldog, it has grooves. And the Model 69 is completely smooth. Um, so I've got revolvers that have both styles. I don't think I have a preference. They both work for me. Now you may be wondering why in the world would you buy a 34 ounce 44 Magnum with only five shots? And I would tell you because I really really wanted it. Is this going to replace my Chart Arms Bulldog? No, it won't replace it. I will work this into my CCW rotation. My, my Bulldog is my primary uh, carry gun. And part of the problem is I sweat a lot and I live in a hot environment right now and yes I know stainless steel doesn't rust. Well yes it does. Um, and I would rather sweat on and damage this uh, Charter Arms than I would a nice Smith & Wesson. Also this is smaller and it's lighter but this 69 will be worked into the rotation. I've already carried it. I, uh, I picked up this DeSantis thumb brake holster and it uh, it worked just fine. Concealed very nicely and uh, carried very well. So I will carry this at times, especially in uh, colder weather. The two of these have the same manual arms, the same capacity. Uh, they can be loaded with the same ammunition. So I have no problem switching between the two of those with carry. And this is a great firearm for hiking, for going through the woods, for hunting, for uh, backpacking, for camping, for fishing, uh, riding an ATV. Just about anything you do in life can be augmented with a good 44. Now I have an outside of, uh, waistband holster for my Charter Arms Bulldog, but I normally carry inside the waistband. This is a an Alien Gear inside the waistband holster, and the Alien Gear doesn't actually make one for the Charter Arms. So I ordered a base from them, and then I formed the, the shell for this revolver. And I've ordered another one that's actually a touch longer down here uh, for this revolver, and I'm going to be making an inside the waistband holster for that one. And I'll try it out and see how it works. Now let's talk about shootability. I have taken this to the range and I've shot some 44 specials through it. And it was very pleasant to fire 44 specials through this revolver. Now I can assume at this point in time that it's quite a thumper with full magnums. This says 44 magnum. Uh, this is a 44 special that has magnum capability. I've started to refer to this one as the noisy cricket. And I'm sure that as soon as I shoot a full magnum through it, that name is going to stick. Series 4 de -atomizer. That's what I'm talking about. Noisy cricket. Okay. Get down! So let me insert some video here real quick from the range shooting some 44 special through this Model 69. This is the Lee 200 grainer.
those specials were um, very pleasant to shoot. Uh, but you may be asking, well, what about magnums? Well, in a couple days, I do plan to post a video doing some ammo tests, and it will include shooting some full magnums with the 69. You know, it's interesting. Even with this two and three quarter inch barrel, I can load up ammo for this that will be almost twice the muzzle energy of what a 357 Magnum from a full length barrel can be. And I can also load ammo down to uh, be equivalent to what a light 45 auto would be. Speaking of shooting full Magnums in this, um, let me read you a couple paragraphs from an article Skeeter Skelton wrote in the Shooting Times magazine in July of 72. The article was titled, Can You Handle the 44 Magnum? The intro to that article stated, These guns have undeservedly earned an unsavory reputation for being brutal handbusters. This is not true. They're excellent hunter's handguns, and while they have tremendous muzzle blast and howitzer-like recoil, any six-gunner can adapt to them and take varmints and even big game. Later in the article, he stated, Without realizing it, most shooters find shooting the 44 Magnum unpleasant because of muzzle blast, rather than actual recoil. This is especially true in the case of uh, short barrels, which allow great gobs of slow burning powder used in magnums to pass through the big muzzle and flash noisily in front of the gun. Well, that was in 72. I think shooting magnums in this may be unpleasant because of the giant blast and the recoil, but we're going to find out. So, other than the extractor rod, uh, I'm very happy, and the extractor is just really an annoyance, which I'm sure Smith & Wesson will replace here in a few months. You'll notice a couple of stickers here. Um, those came from West Desert Shooter. If you haven't seen his channel, you really need to go check it out. That guy is crazy. He watches little pieces of lead clear across the deserts of Utah miles away and hits little tiny steel plates. Buddy, I'd like to see you do that from a two and three quarter inch barrel. But uh, he offers um, any sticker you want. He, this one's going to go on a bench somewhere. I'm not sure where yet. I'm looking for a good place for it. And uh, for some reason, he seems to think I like Smith & Wesson. Um, not sure what that's about. If you watch Johnny's Reloading Bench, you'll see a sticker up on his wall. That came from West Desert Shooter as well, and he can do up any sticker you want. Uh, get a hold of him over at his channel, and he can hook you up if you're looking for stickers. And as far as the 69, this is the newest 44 in my stable. If you're considering one, I would heartily recommend it. If you're not considering one, I would heartily recommend that you do. And you'll see more of this in future videos. Again, uh, come back in a couple days, and you'll see me try to break my wrist shooting some full magnums in it. Thank you for watching, and God bless.